through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 269. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of The Wolverine. Snicked, snicked, snicked. Snarl. Snicked. snicked. Um, <laughs> Regenerative noise. Yeah. I don't know. July 26th is the date that yes. that comes out on. Um, we're going to be talking about said movie mm -hmm. and sort of a bunch of the different aspects about it. This is um, obviously the continuation of the Logan storyline played yes. by Hugh Jackman. Originally supposed to be prequel to the X-Men movies, but later changed to be after the Yeah, the whole, the whole chronology of the X-Men series at this point is very, very <laughs> convoluted. I don't like, think Days of Future Past is going to help that at all. No, being if, anything, it's gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, it's going to make it just more complicated. Yeah. But um, <laughs> obviously this is sort of continuing on the track that Wolverine Origins set forward in creating their sort yes. of spin-off yes. movie franchises, <laughs> yeah. with this one being the focus on Hugh Jackman once again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they talked about doing it, obviously, with like Magneto and other stuff, and ultimately that's what became sort of first class. Yes. But so far, this is actually still the only solo X-Men character game. Yeah, this is actually the first time Wolverine is in a movie without X-Men attached to the titles. Yes, that's right. Wolver mm -hmm. Yeah, Wolverine... As it's also his sixth portrayal as a uh, Logan slash Wolverine. Yes, prior and then the seventh yes. being Future Days of Past. Mm -hmm, I mean, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so it was X Men, X Two, X Men Last Stand, Wolverine Origins, X Men First Class, and then the yep. Wolverine. Yep. It's sort of interesting to sort of think about that. You talk about the X Men thing. It's sort of like Batman mm -hmm. with the Dark Knight being the first time yeah. Batman did not appear in That's the title. True. Of the yeah. Thing, so, and then of course they went on to do the very next one without it yeah. either. Yeah. You know. I mean, I was talking about with you in the car ride over that I think Wolverine deserves a lot of the credit for the reinvigorization, I don't know if that's a word, of the modern comic movie. Mm -hmm. I mean... I would agree. X-Men itself yes. was responsible for really revitalizing that industry and studios realizing that there's a lot... Yep, <laughs> uh, a lot of money to be made, and... X Men is really, in my opinion, built large in large part on the back of Wolverine. Yes, He's, I would say by far the most popular character. I, I would I mean, probably. I can't agree. even think yeah. of who would even be number two to him. Yeah, I mean, unless you're kind of like maybe, Professor X. Yeah, or maybe Professor Emmanuel X or, or Cyclops. Something. It's weird. It's weird when you're talking about a villain being probably close to number two with Magneto. Like, yeah. honestly, like, if that's your, your second best character, it probably doesn't speak very highly of your heroes. Wolverine's first appearance was a villain. Yeah. His very first comic appearance was a villain in the Hulk. Yes, was yeah. it 182 or something? something. 181? Yeah, I think it was, was a, yeah. Um, and, you know, interestingly enough, the storyline that this film comes from is a Chris Claremont, Frank Miller Yes, series from, from back in 1982. Yeah, that's crazy. This is a 30 year old storyline. Yeah, well, it's it, still relevant. But that's one of the things is that Wolverine showed up in the X Men and kind of became a character. But he was kind of a B or C lister. He was kind of just there for violence in the beginning. Mm. And it kind of the this series, the Claremont Miller series that this is movie is kind of loosely somewhat based off of, was really literally Wolverine number one. Like it was his first time getting his own comic. It was his own backstory. It was his own setup. Like that hadn't happened before. And we didn't really know anything about the character yeah. beforehand. Yeah. I mean, and granted, if you actually like look at the, or like that was the whole thing that killed me about Wolverine origins is that they set that film up about like his past being too painful to remember. Mm -hmm. And then they revealed what his past was. I was like, that really wasn't that bad. Like I've seen worse That's things in other they didn't comic do a movies. very good job with it. That's yeah. probably a lot. That's of probably it, part of it too. But you know, <laughs> you're right. This is this is uh, based on the Chris Claremont, Frank Miller, which is amazing. Frank Miller's had such a huge influence yep. on modern comic characters. You think about like uh, Sin City, mm -hmm. obviously the the Dark Batman Knight Returns, yeah, yeah, the Batman iteration. Three hundred. Three hundred. Yep. So uh, clearly a very influential comic writer, kind of a sketchy dude. Mm -hmm. uh, spirit, is... spirit, not. Was standing. Yeah. That was, and this is early. This is just him as a cartoonist at this point. So this is just him getting his art style out. Claremont did predominantly, I think, all of, if not most, of the writing. Yeah, you know, uh, Hugh Jackman said he was very interested in the character because er, this story arc mm -hmm. because you know it talked about this sort of anarchic, anarchist. Yes, like? sure, anarchist. Let's just say an anarchist. Anarchist uh, character <laughs> who's sort of an outsider being in this world full of Oh, you of think tradition. anachronistic? Outside Probably. of time? Sure. Yeah, that's the... Um, okay. 
But, uh, you know, he's, he's outside of this world of tradition, culture, mm -hmm. and honor, and stuff like that. And, you know, he's uh, also involved with sort of like the samurai world, which yes. is a very important trait which kind of comes into play with him as he goes on. Yes, know. that was one of the things that Claremont said when he wanted to... Re <clears throat> Excuse me. I yeah, just went to puberty. Club, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he said he wanted to... But first off, this is the first time giving Wolverine a backstory, but he said he kind of wanted to... He imagined Wolverine as a ronin. So a samurai mm -hmm. without a master. So putting Wolverine in a Japanese context just kind of seemed a natural step for that. Sure. You can put a code of honor. You can put someone who has this natural advantage against people who are all about balance and fairness, etc. So it'll be really interesting to see what comes out of it and how close it rises the storyline i mean looking from the outside purely based on the trailer though mm -hmm. how excited are you about this movie uh, you know I, I i feel like i would have been a lot i would have been pretty excited about this movie consistently if x-men origins had not already happened i would be mm. super thrilled about this movie if it had happened before x3 but i mean there's been two mediocre bad. to bad movies yeah. predominantly not headline because x3 wasn't headline but since we're talking about, yeah like you said he's, he's the headline, most famous yeah. oh, totally, x-men yeah. so people are there to see him i sure. mean you got two movies with wolverine being eh, okay i mean and it's kind of like all right yes granted we're going a different storyline we're going this different arc it you know it takes place after x3 but there's flashbacks sure Healing power may be going away, sure. Yes, yeah, that's, Different things. Yeah, that's one of the big cruxes of the movie is that Wolverine has sort of realized that, you know, he's going to outlive everyone yes. he loves, basically. Yes. They're all going to die. The loss of Jean Grey is yeah. a reminder to him of his continuing mortal non-immortality. Yeah, you know, this is something like they've dealt with, like, shows like True Blood and stuff like that. Yes. Or vampires deal with it a lot. I think you even talk about in Twilight, where yeah. everyone you know uh -huh. and love is going to die. Yep. And he's sort of like given the prospect of mortality and he sort of jumps at it and obviously it seems like he's hoodwinked mm -hmm. um but you know it's it's really sort of i don't know i just am not particularly excited to see a non-regenerative wolverine like i mean it's one of those things where like i said it's like sure they could do interesting stuff with it but i mean maybe you shouldn't have made two movies where the classic Wolverine we know and love didn't do really cool stuff before you decided to change it. Maybe that should have happened earlier. He, like, here's the bigger issue with this film going into it, is that it is directed by James Mangold. Yes. Who, who's, who's got a decent filmography yeah. himself. I mean, I love Copland. Yep. Kate and Leopold, you know, hooking up with mm, Hugh Jackman yeah. back in the day. Uh, not necessarily good, but Identity is a decent film. Girl Interrupted. Well, Girl Interrupted, solid. Come on. Uh, Walk the Line. Yeah. I mean, Academy Award winning stuff there. Mm -hmm. 310 to Yuma is kind of, eh. And then, Night and Day, I think, is underappreciated. Mm, Not great. I think but there's I, a reason it's underappreciated. I think it's underappreciated. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, a decent guy. But the bigger issue, though, is that they almost had Darren Aronofsky directing it. And yes. that would have been a very interesting approach to see what he wanted to do. And there's a couple Could, reasons as to why they'd speculate mm -hmm. they live. Number one, there's sort of the... the he didn't want to leave his family yes. due to having to shoot elsewhere. And, you yes. know, it was right when he was divorcing Rachel yeah. Weisz. Yeah, so so, having personal problems. Yeah. yeah. But the bigger one is that there's speculation that he wanted to go, like, hard R yes, with it and make it very bloody and stuff. He wanted it and very bloody and very adult. Which the studio wasn't really on board with. And, you know, that is sort of part of the issue is that, you know, James Mangold has gone on to say, you know, uh, or Hugh Jackman said that they're testing a couple versions of mm -hmm, it, mm, an yeah. R-rated one and a PG one. I think the R-rated one's going to be on the Blu-ray or that's something. That's what they've yeah. claimed, yeah, the DVD Blu-ray, but obviously the PG-13 one is the one that's making out there. And he said it's, it ain't Bambi, but it's still like, you know... Yeah, and, and that's what been always been one of the biggest problems with Wolverine in any kind of cartoon form, is mm -hmm. how do you have a guy who has claws that kill things in a movie not kill things yeah. it's like that's why they always that's why they always come up with silly reasons to go against robots because he can hack and slash his way through robots uh, that's why the foot clan were robots in that teenage well, mutant looks like cartoon. there's some robots going on in this movie uh, not really silver samurai is not actually robotic really is no. he, he's that big he is has armor and enhancements but it's still an actual person wow, inside that's impressive yeah he, uh, he looks like a giant i won't robot. give you spoilers of where his backstory is going to come from in case yeah. you might see the movie uh, I, 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 if i looked at my magic eight ball it mm -hmm. would probably always say unlikely the but. thing the thing that i love is that in the description of the silver samurai because i was looking him up a little bit beforehand it says that he wears a suit of armor that is meant to resist all attacks including adamantium 
So he wow. has something that can re that can repel Wolverine's claws, but he doesn't have a sword made of adamantium. That seems to me like a rather silly thing to do. That was a, that was a, that was a <laughs> mistake. maybe an yeah. oversight. Yeah. Now, granted, he has a power that lets him imbue his sword and cut through basically anything, so it's almost better than adamantium, but it's like... So you have why don't you have armor that's just adamantium yeah. at that point? That, that, why you have armor that just propel that just seems silly. It's it's, ama it's Marvel. So that's it's amazing though to think about how close this is to being so different. I mean, Hugh yeah. Jackman was a replacement in and of himself for Dugray Scott, who was gonna be huh. the original Wolverine, huh. but he had to leave just shortly before production was gonna begin because uh Mission Impossible two required two extra months of shooting. I see. And it's sort of that's like... It. Wow. You that, th that, that small turn of the die. Well, it's like, A, that worked out great, because Hugh Jackman's been a great Wolverine. Oh, yeah, but and he's done so many other things because you, he got that. Can you imagine Dugray Scott sitting at home just like, I could have been, man. Look what I could have <laughs> done. Like, it's probably like, it um, been me. like a Will Smith with The Matrix. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> the difference is like... Yeah, that's true. Will Smith is much bigger than Dugray Scott in yeah, the end. So yeah. <laughs> It's also no like, offense, I can't <laughs> really imagine Dugray Scott as Wolverine. Like... Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman just feels so appropriate to, and I remember being hugely skeptical mm. about Hugh. I was like, I've oh, never yeah. heard of him. I can't yeah. believe they gave this iconic role to somebody who's like unknown. Like mm -hmm. it seemed like a huge gamble to me. And I mean, I gotta say, it's probably one of the best casting yeah, decisions. I mean, there's a last... reason that they've stuck with Hugh Jackman and continued to have him in it, despite it's... terrible films. Yeah, which not only is the fact that he's still into it, which definitely helps, right. but that he's good at it even if the it's movies not his aren't fault great. like yeah. it's everyone know can tell it's like it's not yeah. him that's the problem yeah. and i mean and he it's interesting too because they've dialed back a few things they've kind of changed like tried to you know they obviously took a lot of credibility based on the fact that darren aronofsky wanted it to be hard r and kind of tried to add that in because sure, it's yeah. like his hair is a little bit less ridiculous his claws are a little bit meaner hugh jackman says he got more most as ripped as possible for this to the point where he said Every time he's played at Wolverine before this, he's felt like he didn't have enough time to yeah. be as big as possible. Yeah, so this time that. he called The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and said, what do I need to do? And got to the point where he was even doing de like 36 hours of dehydration before yeah. shirtless scenes to Which make I, his muscles. I guess is a common thing in like the bodybuilding yeah. community to make your muscles be yeah, more make them, yeah. And he would say he was on the verge of like fainting yeah. during the scenes, but he yeah. thought it looked great. Yeah, so I end. mean, he's the closest he feels to looking like the Wolverine should have been. And while that's cool and all, it's kind of sad it took this many films to get to that point. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. But it's interesting to realize like the original, you know, this whole arc line of Wolverine having a Japanese lover and going back to Japan and getting all involved in all this. It was not the only thing that came out of this that we think classic things that of Wolverine the the cat one of his catchphrases actually came from the original Claremont Miller line and that's the I'm the best there is at what I do which is used in so many iterations over and over by Wolverine in comics mm. but it came from this original source material wow. that this movie's being based on so I mean you know it's not horrible source material to pick no, from totally not it just lets us hope they don't make it stupid yeah the other thing is that we should notice, I don't know if you want to call this gimmicky or not, this mm. is, I believe, the first X-Men movie to be released in 3D and IMAX. Yes. So, that right. feels mm -hmm. a little gimmicky to yes. me. I don't really see the need to have, like, Wolverine claws coming at me. It's yeah. kind of cool, I guess. If it's they... literally that, that scene in the train from the trailer. Yeah. They were like, that'll be awesome in 3D, guys. <laughs> and so then they made I don't it. even know. Like I, I find it more likely that the business people are like, Fuck yeah, we're always seeing this in yeah. 3D. They're like, have you seen the 3D surcharges? Yeah. It's like a 50% price we're bump. We're going to make a million, yeah. billion, trillion dollars. Speaking of money, that's an interesting thing. So X-Men Origins, the last failed X-Men movie, had a about a $150 million budget, made about $180 million worldwide. Uh, you know, sure, that's, I guess, a, a win, but that's not much not of a win. This movie has a budget of about $100 million. So... You know, less of a budget. You don't have to. If if you can at least reach where X Men Origins reach, which isn't saying much, it'll probably be profitable. But you know, I mean, it's nice to know that the budget is less than X Men Origins. Well, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, what I, they're I, doing with that. It budget. does feel more efficient. This is a less mutant-driven movie, yeah. so that's probably part of it. I, I also, mean, probably less realistically speaking, less star power. Well, yeah, definitely less star power. You're right. I mean, you got to also note that First Class was in there, too, between True. those two films. No, and that yes. was a successful one, and he was technically in that movie. And Darren Aronofsky was only ever picked in the first place because Singer declined. Right. Originally. And clearly when Aronofsky either was kicked out or dropped out or however the studio decided they didn't want to go with him, they probably begged 
Brian Singer to, or to come back, and he was like, nope, still not going to do it. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, he's definitely got a special place for the X-Men and of himself, and that's why he's come back for future days mm-hmm. of death. But, yeah, I mean, it is it is an interesting position that, like, this character has had several mm-hmm. poor showings, yeah. and they really do kind of need him to bounce back. If they, if they don't hit it out of the park with this, which, I mean, you look at all the stuff that's coming out this week, and it seems very much... This is probably the big release, yes. unless there's like a lot of holdover from stuff like Red and Turbo and Despicable Pacific Me. Rim and Despicable <laughs> Me and all that sort of stuff that really hurts it. Yeah, like it seems like this is probably the film to lose yeah. basically at the box office, which works out in their favor. But mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I will say, okay, in terms of popularity, critics currently are average rating of the 21 reviews that have been released for okay. it so far. It has an average rating of 6.4 out of 10. Which is mediocre. Okay. And on Rotten Tomatoes, it's gotten 14 fresh reviews and seven rotten ones. So it's basically, like you know, 66. as you said, 6.4. Yeah. I mean, it's it's right on that verge of hmm. not or going rotten. So it's sort of like, you know, that but, doesn't you know, bode well for it. But in terms of audience interest mm-hmm. in it, 99% of the people cool. that responded to the poll said they want to see it. So clearly, maybe there's more interest in it than we realize. Yeah, but I think I feel like as this person who knows statistics, if you're asking people if they want, if you're p- putting a poll out asking if people want to see a movie and they don't want to see the movie, they're, they're less respond, likely to respond yeah. to the poll. You might be right. So, yeah. I mean, not saying that that doesn't. It's still probably heavily leaning because I mean, all comic book movies pretty much nowadays are heavily leaning on what the audience wants. Or at least that's the assumption is that the audience will be clamoring at it. I don't know. You you wonder if like after X Men Last Stand and uh, Origins, like maybe. Maybe Wolverine is losing his niche because I mean, yeah, we were talking before we got here that I would say he's arguably top five most popular comic yeah. character, and maybe that's no longer the case. Maybe he's lost that standing. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that it was only you know the early '80s that he even got an origin story to, and his own comic line to be a character that would eventually catch up to Spider-Man. Yeah, that's quite a feat a huge, to catch uh, I mean, up to. No, not only that, but you say like you know '82 when this came out was like his first like backstory mm-hmm. by. The 90s, and I remember that mm-hmm. was when I was getting to comics. Like, by that point, oh, he, yeah. was al- he was already like the huge. X-Men. Yeah, like, he was already... <laughs> it was it. It was mm-hmm. him. Like, everything was... Be- I mean, you talk about cartoons, yeah. monsters, comics, like... And you know, if this is successful, and obviously, if Days of Future Past coming out is successful, then, I mean, right there, Fox is kind of nailed home to be like, you know what, we don't need to be a whole comic studio, we can just make the X-Men and X-Men characters its own franchise. It would be them versus Marvel versus DC. Yeah, I mean, I think they'd really have to sort of re, um, revisit the idea of doing the origin type mm. individual character yeah. things, which I think is what they'd have to do to make it, like sustainable as a, like an mm. entire studio yeah. wide otherwise like you can't release a new x-men film no, every year otherwise and if they're really people. smart they would never put x-men origins in the title again they would just call right. other movies like storm cyclops i don't you know, even mind i don't even was, mind the like, origin like the whole like x-men origins part of it was sort of like the like wolverine <laughs> yeah, origins like, by itself is kind of it's an okay title yeah magneto origins whatever it would be an okay title not great but okay. Wolver- uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Like, it's just so convoluted. You're just like, this is, I guess it's English, but it yeah. feels very You're like, it's peculiar. the beginning of the X-Men, but only one of them. Huh. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's strange. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm not overly psyched about X-Men it. X-Men Origins was first class. Let's just be honest. Yes. X-Men Origins right. was when the exactly. X-Men yes. started. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, I don't know. I'd be curious to hear other people's thoughts. Yeah. You know, maybe we're the minority and not excited about it. Maybe people are just clamoring to see it. I Maybe Wolverine vs. the Ninjas will be what this sum- what the America needs this summer. It seems very peculiar that this is the last of the, the com- major comic movies coming out. Huh. I mean, you've had, was it Iron Man? Yeah. You've had Men's Superman. Steel. Yeah. You've had, um, I guess this is it. That's it, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's like... Spider-Man was a while back, right? That was yeah, last year. Yeah, that's right. Um, but it's sort of like, if you're going to release this, you'd think you'd want to get it out before those, because the scale of this is clearly going to be the smallest of them. Yeah, maybe so. that's why. Maybe they wanted the most lasting power of people not just being like, cool, now we've seen Wolverine, now let's go watch Avengers 2, or you know, whatever the next movie would be that would come out afterwards. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but let us know your thoughts at our website, which is MacGuffin. That's mm-hmm. MacGuff.in or Twitter.com slash MacGuffincast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 
323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers and badges. Leave some stars on iTunes and thumbs on the YouTube. Hit us with the comments. We'll hit you back. Indeed. We like that stuff. In and, uh, three dimensions. Three dimensions. Yes. IMAX. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This tech don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.